Welcome to the Lamar Boshman Podcast. This podcast series is called The Music of God. And in this episode, we're going to discover the singers of heaven. Who sings in heaven and what do they sound like? Well, I'm Lamar Boshman, and I love this subject of music in the Bible. And these episodes are topics from an in-depth online course called The Music of God, available at lamarboshman.com. Let's join the conversation. Welcome to this podcast. I'm Lamar Boshman, and we're exploring the secrets of the music of God as found in the Bible. Interesting study. It's based on the Music of God online course that you can access at lamarboshman.com. With me today is Batsurai Chada. He's from Toronto area, actually Oshawa. Welcome, my friend. Hey, how you doing? Good, nice good. Yeah. Uh, th- aren't you enjoying this? Oh, man, I love the topic. And yeah. um, certainly something we want to, I want to get better, a better understanding of. So yeah, it's good. To be here. Yeah. yeah, me too. And our topic today is uh, the singers of heaven. What are they like? What do they sound like? And uh, we're going to explore that and who sings and how do they sing. So it's interesting because we want it to be down on earth as in heaven, right? Amen. Right, right, yeah. right, right. Well, the first group that I've discovered that sing, and of course, everybody thinks of them, are the angels. We found in the book of Revelation that they encompass the outer circle around the throne. There's the four living creatures, 24 elders, and 144,000. And they're all positioned in the proximity of the throne and the Lamb. And this outer circumference of balconies and balconies of angels going upwards and downwards and every which way, because I don't know which way is up in heaven. And they're singing. You find it in Revelation 7 in the NRSV. And all the angels fell on their faces before the throne and worshiped God singing. So (laughs) I'm blown away by this imagery. What do you see here? Man, you know, sometimes, you know, when you grow up, as, especially in, in the Christian world, you know, it's like, oh, one day we're going to be worshiping in heaven forever and ever and ever. And then, of course, we're looking at, you know, revelations and we're seeing, well, the angels were singing, holy, 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 holy. I'm like, oh, man, that's going to get, <laughs> that's going to get old quick, you know. <laughs> so I think a, a, a cool thing about that is like, what are they responding to that lets them yeah. sing the same phrases over and over? And it's these, the, these singers are looking at God, even though they've been there for a millennium or like just trillions of years, whatever, you know, there's no time. They're still seeing new glimpses and yes. new aspects of God that cause them to spontaneously respond with holy, 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 as if it was the first time, yeah. as if it was the first thing they saw. And every every new facet, every new glimpse is just as inspiring as the last. Never and ceasing so, and ever never increasing. Ceasing. Exactly. They, and they're falling on their faces, it said. Oh. I never saw that before. Exactly. Falling and singing to God. They're, they're emotionally moved at what they exactly. behold. Exactly. Their their physical bodies or their physical posture, whatever that that celestial body is like, is responding also. Yeah. Um, so singing isn't even just a a vocal thing, but it is a physical response. You know, I, I think you said it once. Us as humans are are instruments. You know, yeah. we have right, right. we have pipes. We'll, we'll talk about that. Yeah, and so these singers are responding with their whole being to who God is, and and it, we say they sang. <laughs> yeah, and then in Revelation five one, the NRSV says thousands and thousands of angels were singing with full voice, worthy is the Lamb that was slaughtered. Mm-hmm. And so the emotion of that, the passion of that, and notice the subject or the focus is not the song they're singing. It's the focus is the subject of what they're singing. It's God, the intensity of that. Now, there's another group that I discovered, and it's what I call the martyrs. And John sees and hears this group, and they indicate that they'd been killed by the satanic beast and refused to, to get his tattoo. They are very much alive in this situation, and they're standing before the throne 
and they're endlessly singing <laughs> praise and worship to God. It's amazing because they're so excited that thank you for saving us. Thank you for giving us new life. Thank you for this entity we find ourselves in. And thank you for that we can be with you. And they reflect back their gratitude and the act and his attributes. I think response and authentic response is the best way to say it. But these are people who, um, there's the redeemed people, the martyrs, there's the 24 elders, um, there are the angels, you know, the, the, the living creatures, and they all have a different relationship with God. Yeah, or a different point. Um, perspective and function, and and their their uniform response is in song, but the nature of this, the lyrics of their songs are slightly different. Yeah, um, and it's contextual, and but they're all in one accord, all in one. You know, it's just one big orchestra, and they always see the songs happen at different times. Um, so I don't know what it's like. You know, uh, you know, right now in heaven, what's happening? Um, did John see a special glimpse? Did he see something that happens in the future? Did he see, um, or is this something that's always going on even now? Um, because heaven is outside of time. Yeah. And, and I was looking at the verse here again. It says, they sang out they were victorious over the beast and over his image and over the number of his name. And they sang the song of God's servant, Moses, and the song of the Lamb. They're singing of their first deliverer, and the last deliverer that delivered them. They're singing. And, and the, another aspect of how they're singing is they're celebrating. They're yeah. celebrating victory. So it's a very boisterous, victorious, celebratory song that they're singing. And, and they're just excited to be alive. And their natural reaction is to sing and make music to God. Exactly. Powerful. And Powerful. then there's some four living creatures you talked about. These are interesting entities because in the King James, John, they're, they're described beasts or yeah. creatures that are alive, but there's nothing like them on earth. He couldn't compare them to anything. So in the language of comparison, there was nothing he could use. And so there's different translations. When I got into this on my course that I taught at Christ for the Nations and the music theology course, we talked about who are these creatures and what are they like? I call them aliens. You know, I'm Canadian too. So, yeah. hey, bro, good to see you. High five. <laughs> okay. And when I come back to the United States from being a, a, abroad, yeah. I have to go into the resident alien line because I'm a permanent residence here, but I'm an alien, meaning I'm not from around here. Yeah. I'm from another place. <laughs> so these creatures are nothing we know on earth. They're extra celestial. They're winged. They have wings. They very much probably are like cherubs. So they're cherubic creatures with multiple faces, full of eyes, and often associated with the worship of heaven, and they're making music. And they're also connected with God's presence, because cherubs throughout the scriptures are connected with God's manifest presence. So these multi-faced creatures full of eyes are worshiping, and they're singing before the throne. <laughs> what did it sound like? Oh my gosh. You know, wow. Well, but just even to stop you on that. Yeah. Like full of eyes within and without. Yeah. So there is nothing that goes on in the heavenly realm, earthly realm, created order. There's nothing that happens that they don't see. Hmm. It's good. They have nothing happens behind their back because they have eyes everywhere. Yeah. And they have seen every beautiful thing. They have seen everything that we even here would say is praiseworthy and good. They have seen it all, and yet their solitary song is holy, 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 yeah. is the Lord God. Because having seen it all, you know, we have that song, there is none like you, no one else can touch my heart. You know, I could search for all eternity long. Well, these guys have. Yeah. They've seen it all. They have. <laughs> and their song is still holy, 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 is the Lord God Almighty. These are singers. The singers who have seen everything that is beautiful still know what is ultimately beautiful. Yeah. Another group that's up there are the 24 ruling elders. They're mm. kind of like ruling priests because there's 24 that speaks of the priestly uh, function in, in, of music in the temple, of yeah. worship to God, uh, the 24 shifts, et cetera, et cetera. But they're sitting on thrones, so they're, they're, they're kingly rulers. And 
the scholars say that they're elders, like in the Jewish tradition, where they're, they counsel, they make judgments, so they're judges. They're plainly earth leaders. Some speculate the represents of the 12 tribes and the 12 apostles. I don't know for sure. But the aspect is they're sitting there and they're ruling and reigning. They have golden crowns, which speak of authority, but also speak of divine nature. And they're sitting there and they're singing and praising God. But there's moments when they get up off the throne and violently cast their crowns at the foot of the lamb and the throne. It's not just oh, here, you know, I give this to you. No, they throw them, the aspect of casting them out passionately and then laying prostrate and holy obeisance before him and total prostration. That's the extreme emotional context of this worship. And, and they're singing. It's crazy wild. I can't imagine what it's like. <laughs> yeah. And uh, that falling down, I love, again, Matt Redman has an album called Face Down. And that physical response yeah. um, to the majesty of God, can I get any lower than this? How do I push, position myself lower? And not, I don't even know if it's out of, I don't even think it's out of fear. It's a, you are so, you are so much higher. And I just want to, I don't know how to express it because as humans, we're, we're holy reverence. Yeah. There's a it's pride a, in us that's, you know, refuses to bend, refuses to bow, especially, you know, North American, we're like, oh yeah, we pride ourselves on the freedom. But these are singers who are so aware of whom they're in the midst of. Right. That they naturally respond by taking off their crowns and said, listen, this thing on my head, thank you. Those, where do those crowns come from? Well, they were given right. by the Lord. To, to and them. so they are taking off the very thing that he gave them. They are giving back what he gave them. And so taking it off, say, hey, listen, thank you very much for this crown. But this crown, I want to take this off and to say that you are worthy even above this. And I am nowhere near. I, they cannot be another crown. When the, you have a crown on your head, I am not wearing a crown on mine. Yeah, and they, they speak to me of all accomplishments, all prodigies and degrees yeah. and trophies and accomplishments that we've made, and we cast them at the feet of him because he's worthy. And I, I don't know if that's the actual lyric that they sing. Yeah, and, worthy are you, O Lord, yeah. our God, to receive glory and honor and power, for you have created all things, and because of your will, they existed and were created. And so what you're talking about, that obeisance, is like a holy, a deep reverence because mm -hmm. they're awestruck, the sovereignty and the power of him who they behold, but also it's a great honor of him. Yeah. To, uh, in tradition in the Middle East, you, you would bow your forehead to the ground in honor to the one that you're approaching, and that is deep respect, shows a, a reverence. And I yeah. think that's another aspect of what they're doing. They're just not sauntering. Well, how are you doing, Jesus? Good to see you. I hope the, hope the music's good today. <laughs> hope you play my song. Do you take any requests? You ever been in a worship service like that? <laughs> yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. There's a, what about the concept of the a weight, the weight of glory? Yes, um, yes. If somebody all of a sudden gave me 500 pounds on my shoulder, um, maybe my knees would be, yeah, I'm pretty strong. I'd probably do something. But... Uh, most people, most of us would buckle under the weight. And I wonder if there's an aspect of that, that there's a glory in the room that I'm falling down under the weight of this glory, not out of, oh, I'm afraid I, I'm to do something wrong, um, but I cannot do anything but bend and fall prostrate and cast yes. my crown. Yes, yes. And my, the only authentic response is this. Right now we can choose to bend our knee, but there will be a day where that choice is no longer ours. Yeah, that's strong. That's and not powerful. out of, again, I don't think, I, I know the Father is not a punitive kind of, I'm going to kill you if you don't, but I think it's more the weight of glory that when he's in the room in, in such a way, in that throne room, our knees bend and we fall face down. All generations, all peoples that go to the other side are going to have that same experience. It's powerful. I know my dad's <laughs> past, my mom's past. And so when I'm looking at her body in the coffin, as I did, I sang at her funeral, uh, 
I, I know that's not her temple. That's, that's her, her dirt suit. But yeah. she said that, and the real her is in heaven worshiping unrestricted without her musical limitations exactly. uh, before the Lord in total honor and power. There's other singers in heaven. There's the all creatures. We mentioned this in a previous uh, podcast, crocodiles and reptiles. There's worms, badgers, and ants in the earth and all that's in the sea, the salmon, uh, the octopus, the whales, and uh, red birds and blue birds are all singing to God. Uh, the Bible says, Every creature, the amberjack and the humpback, I mean, just yeah. think about every creature is singing to God. So uh, harks and larks, they're all crying out to him in glorious celebration, in, in honoring the one that created them. Uh, whales and quails, they're all glorifying. I feel a song coming on. Right? <laughs> whales and quails. <laughs> oh, and, if, and if they all went silent, even the very rocks yes. would cry out. Instead. So there you get the coral and the coral and the floral. They're all, They're... All, all molecular <laughs> structure is crying out to God. They all sing to their heavenly king, a glory right. to God in the highest. So why wouldn't we? Given all this is the natural response of all creation, all of heaven, not just, in, not just on earth, we are the one being who has the ability to come before him and choose. Mm. We can choose to sing. We can choose to honor him. Yes. We can choose to fall. I mean, there's going to be a day where there is no choice and every knee will bow and every tongue confess. All the singers in the, the created order, we are the only ones with the choice. Yeah. Who've been given the choice. And I think that means so much more um, to a father when his children choose to sing, choose to give yes, gifts, that's choose beautiful. to respond um, in worship and in, in obedience and all these kind of things. It's such a tender, it's like, oh, this means a lot to me because you could have chosen something else and you chose this. Right. Yeah. Well, we're coming to the end of our time together. And so thank you, Betsarai, for this conversation. You inspire me Good. and and you got a great imagination. You need to write more songs. You know what I'm saying? Oh man, that's that's <laughs> that is a prophetic word for the moment. There you Thank go. You very much, um, Lauren. Your book, "The Heart of Worship," was was certainly the first book that woke worship up within me. Oh wow! Um, I'd known about worship, but I read that book, and every page came alive. Every I I think I read it in the course of like two days, and that changed the trajectory of my life um, wow. completely. It wasn't so much music anymore; it's about the worship of the King, and so beautiful. Um, that was about 25 years ago. That was about 1995, uh, 25 years ago. And to be sitting here talking about music with you um, is, there is a God. <laughs> Just say, <laughs> hey, he knows man. how to orchestrate everything. Yeah, well, I'm Thank so glad God put us together. You're welcome. And that's the power of books. That's the power of online courses. And that's what this is about. We want to put in you the principles of music making in the Bible so that you could take it to a whole new generation into your neighborhood. And so check it out, lamarboshman.com. There's a link on the front page, uh, online courses that are transformational. And there's one on the authentic, which is about worship of God, and the others on the music of God, and you'll enjoy those. So follow us on your favorite social media. This has been a great time exploring the singers of heaven. And our next episode, we're going to talk about who plays instruments in heaven and what kind of instruments. Da -da -da -dum. <laughs> so we look forward to our next podcast and we'll see you soon. God bless you. <laughs>